So I, I understand everyone is tired already, and those who didn't coffee, have coffee already probably are sleeping. So I'll try to awake you. And the, you, you see, somehow my talk is not related to my title. So usually I am speaking about research on hardcore models and and uh, AI and etc. But today I'll speak about uh, soft skills. Uh, Okay, first reason because I was asked to speak about the skills. <laughs> Second, you will see that in fact it's very much related to, um, to research, but it will at the end of my talk. But let's start. Uh, oh, that was supposed to be in my mind. Anyway, so as usually we start from definitions and the skill. So to understand what soft skills, you first need to understand what skill, right? And then to distinguish between soft skills and hard skills. Okay, so skill is the ability to do something well. Okay, simple. Okay, then uh, let's see the difference. So this is quite a philosophical picture. And uh, for example, I have an idea to ask you a question. Uh, think about some business like software development company, a bank, university, whatever. If you try to think about it, do you first think about it as in, in functional way? So business is a mechanism, a device, some, some tool which takes some inputs, right? some money, some resources, produce some outputs. This is one view of your business, right? And the other view is social. So we, like, it's more like Japanese view, right? So we don't care about, we do care about input. And output, but on the first place is relations between different people, attitude, like uh, harmony, and all this stuff, right? And depending, it depends, right? So if you think in terms of functional, then every person for you is just a uh, kind of part of your, of your mechanism, right? And then you expect some functional requirements to these people, right? And hard, hard skills are exactly functional requirements to your employees. So you expect like some language proficiency, like A1, B2, C1, so you, something you can easily measure. Some tests, exams, whatever, right? Second is certificate degree, type and speed you can easily measure, like how many symbols you can type, right? And uh, machine operation, because programming. So this is exactly what you need if you try to plan some business process, right? So we have some input, then we put some person here, get some input and output. So if this person has better hard skills, then it's more productive. You can provide more inputs, more outputs, get more money and stuff. And soft skills is exactly what you need if you think about business as in, in social context, right? Because again, people surely they do some job, but they are, each of them is individual. They have some, okay, maybe ideas, some thoughts, some dreams, some, some something. Actually, why it's called soft? Because it's really not that easy to measure, right? Because we have, okay, let's see this communication. Actually, probably each of us can communicate somehow. <laughs> but definitely some are more good in communication, some are not. So, but it's not easy to measure it, right? That's why it's called soft. Second is flexibility, okay. It's, I'm not sure if you can measure flexibility. <laughs> or oh, leadership. Okay, you, you probably have this attitude, you know, it's clear to everyone that this guy has a good leadership, right? But the other one is not, but again, it may, your feeling could be decision or whatever. Teamwork and time management. So you see, you see kind of the difference. And uh, it's like in testing, you have kind of functional testing and non-functional, and you cannot say which one is more important. So the both parts are really, really important. So, Let's go ahead and uh, see some uh, definition from different sources. Let's just read the slide. So the longest one says that soft skills are critical thinking, problem solving, public speaking, professional writing, teamwork, digital literacy, leadership, professional attitude, work ethic, career management, and in the cultural fluency. The shortest one says that it's just social skills, interpersonal skills, and a positive attitude. Right? And if you like something in between, it's just organization, communication, teamwork, networking, public speaking, creative writing, time management, leadership. So what you see, again, 
the list is soft. <laughs> the list of soft skills is soft. So you cannot clearly measure, kind of, in mention list, create a complete list of soft skills, but more or less it's about the same, right? So let's go ahead and uh, uh, when preparing this uh, talk, I noticed that you know there are kind of uh, this uh, one is here HR HR people <laughs> HR people who really are, I mean for them it's really daily job to have all these interviews to 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 show candidates and I noticed there is a web page for HR professionals which is the list of uh, industry specific soft skills. So soft skills you will need, for example, working in some lab or in retail company or in some hotel are somehow different from soft skills you need if you are an engineer. And this is a list uh, of uh, soft skills specific for technology job. And since here most of us are kind of logic guys, let's see this list. And number one, I was surprised, mm -hmm. but somehow it's really, uh, I agree, it's true. <laughs> is uh, humility. Because uh, if you are an engineer, it's a very typical situation in your life when you understand better than, the, than, your, <laughs> than your colleague or someone else. Because you work in the system, you understand everything under the hood, every, 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 every connection, and then you need to talk to your customer who just uses that one button. <laughs> and it really requires some humility not to say that he's is stupid or software like this. Yeah, because uh, it's, it's difficult, but it's really very, very important. Because you put in this stuff and the, the other guy is, is putting in something different. So you, you shouldn't think that you are the best. You know the best just because you spend more time with this. So humility is really number one. Then teamwork is more or less expectable. Like from learning, it's also very interesting, but again, once you read it, probably you will read it some, something very natural because technology is evolving like every every five years a completely different piece of technology stack. So uh, if, if you don't uh, learn new thing, then in five years you will be kind of obsolete. I, I recall that I noticed that you know I have a daughter who is just uh, uh, entering the university this year, I hope, and I started to recall my education. I noticed that I was taught for trauma. So what if I just put for trauma <laughs> my CV? <laughs> I want if anyone will be impressed with <laughs> Photon program. But anyway, <laughs> so, the, so the stack is changing, so you need to, to stay updated, so you need to learn. And leadership, and number five also very interesting, able to recognize problems with systems and take action. This is my kind of uh, experience as a okay, already manager. I noticed that most people in your company, in your organization, are really positive and most of them are reactive. Reactive means that if you come to them and ask something, they will definitely help you and support you. But someone needs to trigger the action first. So, and most of the role, roles in your organization, they are, don't, don't, don't kind of, um, don't expect it to be product. So, and the technology guy usually is the one who triggers the process. So, you see as a tester that something is wrong, you shouldn't wait for some additional approval. You just say, guys, I noticed that there is kind of an issue. So you create ticket and then the whole business process. Uh, so one, for example, as a manager, once you get this ticket, you have to process it somehow. But un un until you have this ticket, you just agree it, like everything's okay. No one told me. So you see, and this is really very important. So uh, you have to be self-starter. So you don't need any additional approval. So you are the one who starts the process. Okay, and uh, let's go ahead. And uh, right, so today we are speaking about standards, and there is standard for zero age industry. And if you just go to this page, there is a link, but you can easily Google it. So the standard has a separate part, part for people. So definitely it has something about processes, about organization, about context, but the standard has a separate part about people. And this part has a separate session about competence model, and its section has four subsections. And the last one is about interpersonal competence. 
And okay, let's say in the least, uh, sense of urgency to reduce business impact. Proactive, again, you see proactive, that's what I'm saying, you are the, the start. Proactive work approach, communication to work, sense of quality, decision making. Uh, and it's very much related to proactive because you need to decide. If you uh, trigger an event every minute, it will be not kind of good, right? So it's too, too noisy. If you don't trigger event at all, it's not good at all. So you have to make this decision. So decision making is important so skill, adherence to the process, outcome oriented, learning from mistakes, conflict resolution, mediation, meditation, mediation, availability uh, and creativity. Okay, more or less right? Let's go ahead. And uh, right. So the first question was what? What is soft skill? And now I expect that you more or less have the feeling of what is soft skill, what soft skill is. And <laughs> now the second part of my talk is about why. Why do you need soft skills? And this is the answer. Because soft skills help employees fully utilize their hard skills. And that's really a problem. So I, I noticed after graduation, I realized that I know too much, but. Uh, it's not needed my job. Like, <laughs> you see, too many courses from university which were quite, quite good and interesting, they are not applicable. <laughs> at least at the general position. So when I started to go, it became, yeah. I was surprised that everything is applicable. But uh, this is one of the reasons. So your soft skills is kind of the key to, to make your uh, hard skills uh, fully utilized. And Right, I, <laughs> I like this picture because it, again, it's, about, it's not about the uh, functional part, it's about your non functional part of your work. It's about your happiness. So, your soft skill. So, if you have hard skills, most probably you will be successful at uh, your work. But if you have soft skills, you will be happy and successful. <laughs> you see the difference, right? <laughs> so, and um, right, so happy employees. And uh, soft skills uh, will help you to have relationships, network, groups, organize, stay organized, uh, initiative, leadership, confidence, reputation. So it's non functional part, but which really makes your life at office completely different. So, um, and the same for the bosses. Bosses also, also will be happy <laughs> if you have soft skills because uh, they think you have improved productivity. Improved Leadership, better teamwork, increased workplace communication, and finally, happy boss is also happy place. <laughs> okay, so let's. Uh, uh, it was too general, and finally, I decided to maybe do some specific. Let's consider one specific soft skill, which is data literacy, which is more related to my uh, typical job. And what's the data literacy? Data literacy is the ability to read, understand, create, and communicate data, data is information. So, okay, some people may, sometimes you may feel that it's probably look like hard skill, but that's really not. So, so you don't really need a, like a university course to, to, to learn how to read data. It's more about communication. So it's more about uh, um, right, so, so uh, and data literacy input for the abilities, right? Uh, so, first is to know what data is appropriate. Okay, second is visualization, then understanding some analysis. Again, okay, analysis is some borderline. Truly, to make some deep analysis, you need some hard skills like Python, maybe uh, some. Truly, Microsoft Excel on all sheets. And uh, so, but again, part of analysis is even probably bigger part of analysis is about communication, not, 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 not hard skills. And then data storytelling, communicating information, etc. And uh, yes, so first we start with data culture, uh, data collection culture. So this, this, it's really uh, the key word is, is culture. It's not about skills, because 
Uh, currently, just to collect data is something simple. Just ask your IT guys, just could it please just maybe some, do some backup or maybe some, some maybe log files. Or so you just need to okay, config, configure your system so to save some data. So that it's an issue, but it's, it's, it's more about your culture so that in the beginning of the project, you try to think and give the answer which particular variables which particular characteristics of the system will be useful to answer some questions. So you try to look ahead and think what kind of questions will I have regarding about our projects, about our system, about our behavior there. And then you just, usually it's just few, maybe three, five variables is really enough to, to, to have quite insightful analytics. But you need to decide it in advance. So before the project, let's, for example, make some daily reports about like status. So just simple. And then at the end, you can see the whole picture of your dynamics, right? So, so the first part of the data literacy is to, to have this uh, experience, to have this uh, skill of uh, data collection. Uh, second, uh, you need all the things about... Uh, you know, this is the difference between mathematics and reality. In mathematics, if you speak about data analysis, you will say, okay, let's consider a set of uh, n dimension vectors, real. <laughs> but in real life, you never have uh, just a set of vectors. And this is why. So the first reason is the curious, because these particular vectors are collected by someone. And someone is collected in consistent way, sometimes it's not, con it, for example, it could be manually collected or using some Google forum. Then some people may probably just uh, didn't understand the question, some other people did not uh, answer at all. So you see accuracy, completeness, reliability, relevance, timelessness uh, this kind of are uh, really important uh, characteristics of the data, which again, must be hard skills, right? So you just need to think about it. Once, once you think about it, and the, the answer is really clear. But you need to do this. Uh, the okay, data visualization is quite sure and storytelling. Okay, I assume I have a couple of minutes now. Uh, so, uh, and just to, to finalize my lecture, I decided to teach you some storytelling. <laughs> so, this is kind of formal, uh, more, more or less formal uh, description of what you need to do for storytelling. First, you need to understand the context, then choose some effective visual, then focus some attention, and then tell the story. But this kind of uh, simple part, let's do some demo. Uh, look at this picture. So, can you explain the story? Something about girl, 
So you will see like okay, some thoughts, some some smiles, some something about some, some additional information about this particular parameter of the system, right? This particular object. Then you zoom into some other part, right? And tell some information about the other object. You see the boy, he has some dream, probably dreams about some something else. So you, you have this you have this explanation. And then you focus on relationships between these two objects. You see some, some correlations, some dependency, something in common, right? And then you just conclude with some summary. Happy end, or not happy end, or maybe some additional questions, or maybe see you kind of uh, next. Uh, uh, okay, to be continued, <laughs> whatever. So, um, uh, you see, the structure is very, very simple, very clear, and very thorough. So, let's see an example uh, for some data story for Linux Grammar channel. So, Linux Grammar is quite popular channel on, on Telegram. I wonder if anyone is subscribed to it. So, no one is subscribed to Linux Grammar. So, it assumes that you know nothing about this channel. So, right? So you know nothing, and I assume that in one minute you will know that. <laughs> so let me tell you a story about this uh, inner ground channel. So I'll start with some very basic introduction. So this channel was created uh, like six years ago, which is 6th of January 2016. It has 68,000 subscribers. It has total more than almost 9,000 posts. And average value is, uh, I mean, so the next question is how often do they post uh, things? They have, the average value is uh, 3.8. This is kind of general introduction. So you already know that this is about uh, posts, this is about Linux, so it's more or less popular, it has some frequency, some basic ideas. So then we zoom in into some parameter. And Surely we have said, okay, you said just 3.8, but definitely it's, uh, it's changed over time, right? So let's uh, calculate uh, weekly uh, number of weekly, uh, posts per week, right? So, and you see this graph already, and, uh, okay, do you remember, so we have girl, but not girl, but addition of girls, right? So you need to annotate this, this picture, so let's add some insights. So I noticed that, uh, in the beginning, you see this kind of uh, upper and lower limits. So you might notice that until maybe November of 17, they had like from two to four posts per day. And then something changed and they decided to publish more. And this is more or less clear from the graph. So you have kind of not just simple information, but information plus some insight. Maybe so simple, maybe clear, maybe getting, but Anyway, it tells you, like with the boy, definitely you expected that something will he or she will kill, right? But anyway, you, you should put it into your, into, into, your, into your screen, right? So, second, uh, let's see about some maybe seasonal uh, properties of your, of your publishing. So another two parameters which are quite easy to compute, I mean, how, how the number of posts depend on the big day, right? So it's kind of social project. Social project definitely is different on working day in the UK, right? So and you see that uh, right there is some some influence. Uh, they surely publish less on Sunday and slightly less on Monday and Saturday, and probably the maximum is Wednesday. And that's actually what many many marketing uh, teachers. Just teach you. So probably the best day for publishing is probably Tuesday or Thursday because Monday is too busy, Friday is too, too tired. So, and that's what you see here, right? So, but again, okay. and uh, this is um, monthly statistics. And again, okay, you see that January is kind of more productive, uh, and uh, August is less calm, and you see that July, July. So, probably this guy is like, you know, usual people. So, yeah, you really relaxed during summer. <laughs> okay, relaxed, but not, don't drop uh, the job. So they still do something, but less activity. And in January, okay, it's nothing to do during the night. So 
to just publish your process and you must post it. Another person, this is January, it's more. But again, you see, this trend is not very, very strong, so you are able to get additional annotation. So, you see some influence, but it's kind of stale level. So it's not on, not on drastic, right? So it's small influence of a seasonal factor, right? Uh, okay, but let's see another seasonal factor, which is daily cycle. So since we have time stamp for every post, we can compute the, the hour of, of the publishing. So we see this kind of uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And this is quite interesting already. So you see it's not uniform. Uh, so you may notice that uh, probably this guy to go to skip <laughs> not to bad. <laughs> Sometime. And uh, since it's clear each time, uh, it, it happens that they go to bed approximately at 5, at 5 a.m. And, uh, okay, I would expect that they are kind of usual kind of uh, ordinary people which usually go to bed at, at midnight, right? So then immediately I try to calculate, okay, then this time zone, which is 5 hours uh, to the east from Greenwich, and then you recall the map of US, and realize that, uh, okay, it's exactly east of time. So most probably the guys who run this uh, block is lives in, in New York or maybe some, somewhere else on in the west coast, right? So again, it, just simple analytics, maybe some small, small insights, and if you just put it on your picture, right? And then you just, uh, ah, one, one more, one more. Oh, this is already the last statistic. <laughs> so, Let's see how many posts uh, they have um, during the day. Uh, um, number of posts per day. So it means that they have 120 days with no post at all. So I just, for so those who are not good in statistics, I just spent one minute to, to teach you how to read this distribution. So this is kind of the number of days. So, so no post for days. So here is the number of posts, and here is the number of days. So 127 days. No post at all. 237 days, just one post per day. Uh, 385 days, just uh, two posts during the day. Then maximum is uh, kind of three. So this is more most typical way. Yeah? It's called media in statistics. So uh, uh, 400 days, and they have just two posts. Then, 384 posts, rather, and then uh, you see the decreasing, the exponential, but still we have one post here and one post here. Um, this is what's called in statistics outlier. So you may see, wow, this is outlier. So there was some strange day when they published 20 posts. So you see, it's, uh, since they have almost 10,000 posts, you would not spend time reading them all. But, but once you figure some specific posts, Really interesting post, some specific post, some specific date. You can easily do it manually, right? Just go to your data, just uh, check what was the date. And okay, I expected maybe some something related to Linux, but uh, unfortunately not. That was the first day. <laughs> so they are testing the channel. You know, you start the channel, you post something, then you expect like, okay, where, where am I? One thousand <laughs> followers? Okay, no, I'm not. Well, let me post something again. That's it. So during the first day, they had 20 posts. Uh, and then they decided, okay, not to do this anymore. <laughs> and 17 is another self uh, This is not self this is kind of another day. I can uh, analyze this, but nothing specific happened. Okay. There was some uh, critical bug was found in in Linux <laughs> during this day, but I don't think this was the reason. But otherwise, you see that 13 is the maximum, and quite rare maximum. So you have maybe typically you will live here. So and then so you have already story about one parameter, about that parameter. So you can finally conclude with a nice dashboard. Managers like dashboards. <laughs> Uh, because you have all the information, so you shouldn't start with this dashboard. Because if you start with dashboard, it's too much information. But once you introduce every specific uh, uh, chart, every, every, every is already familiar. You already know this one, 
you understand, okay, this seasonal part, so you see this distribution. Uh, okay, I put it on the right, uh, on, on the right corner because this is my last part, and this is the one you would typically would like to see from every day, right? So you have, so you can easily connect it to your database and have to update it like daily, since you don't have really, um, so you don't probably update it so weekly. But uh, otherwise, if uh, some information is kind of more more real time, you can easily make it like real time kind of live dashboard. So kind of happy end and. Uh, typically, uh, in my experience, once you have this uh, very simple, uh, and we see, okay, let's, let's go back to hard skills. So, what kind of hard skills are required for this kind? I believe every even school boy can do every of such diagram, right? So, nothing specific. Well, probably this one is the most difficult, <laughs> but anyway, you can do something else. So, it's not really about hard skills. It's about soft skills, about communication. So, and typically, okay, some other people ask me, okay, when you start to do some analytics, okay, what, how do we really arrange, arrange your story? Do you think about this kind of algorithm or this kind of uh, method? My answer is simple. First, I think about the customer. Because you're telling a story not to just uh, internet, you're telling a story to someone. So you first think about who is this guy, why do you need this story? If it's your kid and you just need to make him okay, fall asleep, <laughs> you create one story, right? <laughs> if it's uh, your student and you need to, to, to just to teach him some insights, then it's another story. If it's a uh, like top manager who just needs short update during like uh, one minute, it's another story. You should probably spend one month to decide when you communicate with him is your uh, assistance to decide which particular information is most important for this boss at this particular moment. So you start from the audience, so you decide what kind of message and what kind of reaction you expect, which is, what is the decision. Because, you know, information is most often for decision support. If you don't, have, if you don't need any, to make any decision, you don't need information. You, you know, it's like it was told. If everything is okay, then no need to grow. <laughs> so you need information, you need analysis. If you really have some, some difficulties, you are afraid something, uh, you, you really have some challenge. So you, and then you really need some analytics. And then, so so this, this is about your customer. So once you understand the context, the, 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 the need for analytics, you then spend probably much more time than just one minute to create this one minute presentation. And again, okay, this is soft skills. And this is soft skills quite fine, right? So this is, and believe me, the soft skills is fun. <laughs> so just maybe spend some time to, to, to learn soft skills and be happy like all these videos. <laughs> okay, thank you.